Welcome to Virtual Viking. This tutorial will briefly show you how to navigate and interact with objects within virtual reality. To start the reset process, close the water supply control valve. While it's not required, we are going to silence the releasing panel. Go ahead and do that now. Next, you will want to shut off air supply to the system. Air pressure will still be building behind the shutoff valve, but will not be permitted into the piping network. Now, you will need to drain down the system. Start by opening the main drain. Continue draining the system by opening the flow test valve. Once all of the water is drained from the system, you can close both of the drains. We'll start this process by closing the main drain. And then, partially close the flow test valve. We need to leave the flow test valve partially open for when we reintroduce water back into the system. Now you will need to repair and replace any detection devices, such as sprinklers, that had activated. Next, we will establish supervisory air pressure on the system. This should be between 15 and 20 psi. Press the reset button on the releasing panel. This will de-energize the solenoid valve. After resetting the panel, there is still going to be a supervisory condition. This is because the water supply control valve is still closed. Next, slightly open the water supply control valve. This will begin reintroducing water into the system. Once flow has been established, close the flow test valve completely. You 
you will need to wait for the water gauge to reach the same pressure as your main water supply. Then fully open the water supply control valve. Finally, press the reset button on the releasing panel. If everything is normal, the panel will be cleared and there will be no alarms present. Also, there should be a green light indicating that the system has been properly reset. Excellent. The system has been placed back in service. A fire has started in the building. The temperature of the heat detector increases to its activation point, which is lower than the sprinklers. When the heat detector activates, it sends a signal to the releasing panel, creating an alarm condition. When configured as a single interlock system, the alarm condition opens the normally closed electric solenoid valve. If this were a double interlock system, a second signal or event would be required. With the normally closed electric solenoid valve open, the priming water pressure will now be released from the priming chamber. With the priming chamber's pressure released, the incoming water pressure forces the clapper off of the seat, flooding the outlet chamber. With the outlet chamber flooded, water begins filling the trim piping, which activates the PORV and PS10 water flow pressure switch. Water will simultaneously push into the F1 check valve and begin filling the piping network. As the temperature continues to increase, the sprinkler will activate, discharging a mixture of air and water until the supervisory air is purged from the water's path. Water is then continuously discharged from any activated sprinklers, controlling the fire. With water discharging over the fire, the fire's growth is controlled. As the fire decays, the temperature in the compartment is reduced, resetting the heat detector and initiating the soak timer. With the programmable soak timer initiated, water will continue to discharge from the sprinkler for a specified amount of time. The soak timer can be programmed between 30 seconds to 20 minutes. Upon the expiration of the soak timer, the lower solenoid valve is de-energized, returning it to its normally closed state.
With the normally closed solenoid valve returned to its normal state, the prime pressure will begin to re-establish. With enough pressure established in the prime chamber, in conjunction with the spring strength within the flow control valve, the clapper will be forced downward against the seat, automatically shutting off water to the system piping. With the system automatically shut off, water will no longer discharge from the sprinkler. Should the fire reignite, the temperature will increase and the heat detector will reactivate, sending a signal to the releasing panel repeating the process.